Hi there, welcome back to Introduction to Poetry, the final paper, part two. We left off discussing the annotated bibliography, and so let's go ahead and uh, take one more look at that document, and then we'll jump back in. I think what we'll do next is we'll look at the student sample paper. Um, as I said, there's these great resources. I'll try out one of these. These are active links in here. Um, you can you know, browse by poet. Uh, you can see this, you know, go through. You can even go through this list and, and find some, uh, some great work. Um, so here's, so this is the way this is set up. There's um, the poet with a little, little background. There's poems and there's criticism and there's like really good stuff here. These are, these are well um, respected critics here writing about it and so you can see all these based on the based on the the work itself and so you can see here's your your article title which would be included in your work cited here's your author and so uh so this um, assignment is just full of all these um useful useful sources okay so that is going to be as I said, this is going to be your uh, kind of big step towards your research. Again, you're going to have your your annotated bibliography assignment will have four of these. OK, if it doesn't look like this, you're not doing it right. OK, so this will be you know graded on your ability to to take the assignment seriously and, and work. I know you're all probably not used to used to use an MLA format. But notice um, all of these little details that you want to look exactly like that. And that's um, what we're going to be taking a look at right now. So here's this. Um, all the information's here if you look for it. So, so you're going to really need to, as I said, if you want to print this information out, if that's easier for you. But everything that you need to know is here. So definitely reach out to me if you have any questions along the way. But, but I do expect you to um, review all the resources here. Now, in MLA citation style, there are two things you need to do. There's your in-text citation, which is what goes in your paper, and then there's your work cited, which goes at the end. Okay, work cited. Notice this hanging indent. Uh, you're gonna have to play around with that um, in the in the ruler to to get that right. Uh, there could be some formatting um, tools for that as well. And so let's start out with your in-text citation. Your in-text citation needs three things. It needs an introductory phrase, it needs your exact words and quotation marks, and it needs your citation at the end of your sentence. If your quotation's at the beginning of your sentence, don't put your author last name and page in the middle of the sentence. Always put it at the end, okay? So here is um, an example that we can look at. The article reports that quotation mark, quotation mark, parenthesis, author last name, page. Notice the period moves to the end here. No punctuation right here. Punctuation moves to the end. If you do not have an author, then use the article title. Wikipedia defines Triskaidekaphobia as the quotation mark, citation, quotation mark, parenthesis, space, print, all these things. I'm going to be looking at all those small details. So please Look at what's here, use it as an example, and follow it. Notice the article title and quotation marks here, right? So all of these things matter, all right? So get it right. Your next English class, if you understand it a little better, um, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So that is your in-text citation. And so you have four sources. You're probably going to have four separate in-text citations. Again, in-text citations are your, for your secondary sources, which are people who wrote about the poems you're going to be writing about. Okay, and then the work cited. Here's an example of a work cited internet article with an author. Work cited internet article without an author. YouTube videos. So those are probably the primary things you're going to use. If you do use the CCRI database, then it's all done for you, and you can just copy and paste it, which is nice. So that's a good reason to use the CCRI database, which um, again is over. Um, there's a link right here, but you can go through the the college website. Okay, and here's your examples. This is a work cited for a YouTube. This is a work cited for an internet article with an author. 
this is a, a work cited for an internet article with no author. Let's go through this really quickly. Um, the general setup of a work cited. Author last name, author first name, period. Name your article in quotation marks. Notice the period goes inside the quotation mark. Name of the website in italics, comma, date of publication, comma, URL. All right, so we'll go down here. Author last name, first name, period. Article, quotation marks. No, no italics here. The only italics you're going to use are for your website. Notice the date format, date, month year comma right there's no commas in here the comma is just here then your entire url boom the idea is in your paper when i see nailer one i'm going to be like oh i want i want to look into a little bit more on that source so i go right here there's nailer if i look here and i can't find anything in your work cited you didn't do your job your job is to get your reader from your quotation from your borrowed idea to your work cited so then they can find more information. Okay, so that is roughly 8th edition MLA. You may use Noodle tools or, or different, uh, different citation machine, all these things. They may not be completely up to date, so please use this to double check um, any of those uh, formatting sites that you use. Okay, so that's roughly We've looked at the annotated bib assignment. We've looked at the 8th edition MLA handout. We've looked at the assignment itself. The last thing we have to look at is our sample research paper. Again, this is a wonderful paper written by a student who really was engaged in the class. And so you can, um, as I said, this is a five page minimum and the student went to about the seven page mark, which is pretty perfect. Make sure you have your last name and page at the top. There's a tutorial on Blackboard how to properly add in your page number. Make sure you have the assignment heading with a general assignment here and your specific title here. Notice the first letter of each word, important word in your title is capitalized. You don't need to capitalize prepositions or conjunctions. This student chose your, your opening hook should grab your reader somehow. How can you get Let's say your reader, let's imagine your, your reader is someone who doesn't necessarily like poetry. How are you going to get their attention right from the beginning? Think about that. Um, start with a cool hook. It doesn't have to be like this. It could be anything. But this student decided to use a more creative approach. And then your thesis sentence is, in this research paper, I am going to be analyzing nine of Clifton's poems that I find particularly spectacular, and these include. Okay, um, you could use something more specific here. I would say um, these nine poems show the, um, you know, show Lucille Clifton's um, unique approach to race in America, or show her unique um, approach to to the joy of life, something like that. So you could be a little more specific there, but works for me. Paragraph two, biography, don't go too crazy with it, just give a little bit. I, I can look this stuff up and I probably know most of um, the, the backgrounds of the poets you might write about. Um, jump right into those poems. The first of the nine poems are going to analyze. Always use quotation marks around your poem title. Notice this all lowercase, if the original poem has a certain type of, of capitalization or punctuation, stick with that, okay? So always put your poem in quotation marks. Here's the next poem she wrote about, right? Cutting greens, quotation marks. That tells me that that's a poem title, okay? Next, we're gonna look at, this is uh, an example from the poems. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? Lines one, two, and three, right? tells me, um, now here she put it in the middle because now there's more, there's three chunks of, of the poem here, so that will make sense. So using your judgment a little bit, but in general, if you have one quotation, put the lines at the end. And that just tells me, if I look up the poem that you're writing about, I might look it up in a book I have or online. It's always, the lines are always going to be the same. 
So just tell, that's all I need to know. I don't need to know page numbers. I just need to know the lines for that. Although now we're going to jump to our first example of um, in-text citations. Okay. In this in-text citation, this, the student only used this. These are the only exact words from the source. Okay. So these are all her words. Always introduce the quotation in your words and then the quotation, then author last name page punctuation at the end i'm like popova huh who's that oh jump to the end here's the work cited there it is i can click the link and go right to it i might want to find more information or check the source something like that um let's find another in-text citation so keeping in mind there's two types of citation there's the primary source which is the lines of your poem and then there's the secondary source which is the um resources used so you can see here according to this website, Clifton's parents, and so here she used her source as a biography um, to kind of reflect on the poem, the poem, this passage in the poem. Moody one, I'm guessing that's the author's last name. Moody, and there I have my source. <clears throat> um, this this source is that modern American poetry source, and um, this one is doesn't have an author. It's just an article. So notice just the article in quotation marks you don't need this the, the website goes here in, in italics you're going to start with either the author last name or the article title and when you cite the source let's see if we can find it um, you're going to cite it with the the article title and the page number if you don't have an author you're going to cite it okay so i didn't find that source so that is our sample paper again use this format look at it your paper when you submit your paper it should look just like this all this great setup great organization it's no co confusion it's not all over the place it's like focus on each poem focus on form focus on content um, you know this is your chance to show me everything we've been doing all semester is um you you have a handle on it again the work cited some sources say you need to start on a new page. I'm fine. You don't need to. Um, but works cited. Boom. Sources listed alphabetically by either author last name or article title. Okay. And there's her one, two, three, four sources required. So this student nailed that. Um, that is all the resources. So again, once you've looked at all this information, do you know your steps are to find your poet, watch these screencasts, find your poet, post in the collaborate button your poet's name and the a few of the poems you're considering. Next is look at that research. Submit to me your annotated bibliography. Boom, done. And at that point, you can take a pause or you can jump right ahead and go into um, your rough draft. Then you're going to once you've got your poems, you've got your looked at your sources, you've annotated them, you understand them, start developing your rough draft. And that comes to me uh, the following week. And lastly is going to be your um, your final research paper draft is due. And again, um, these things are all going to be shared to my Gmail, which is here. Make sure you're sharing it from your Gmail to my Gmail. There's a tutorial in Blackboard um, in the tech how to button here on how to uh, properly share a Google Doc. So make sure you're doing that the right way. Finally, if you are able to submit a course evaluation for this course, um, I would appreciate it. There's a link here on how to do that. If you've never submitted a course evaluation, um, it's anonymous. I can't view them until after final grades are submitted. So, so um, please please do that because I use your comments to improve the course for the following semesters for the incoming students. And please add in those additional comments because I do really read them. Okay. So that was a, an overview of the English 1220 Introduction to Poetry final research paper. I can't wait to start reading your work and thank you for watching. You have a great day.